there today? Uh, I think we had our ups and downs. We're definitely, Coach Miller's definitely challenged the whole line at least um, to just be consistent and, and just finish the drives. And he, we've noticed that we kind of taper off, especially due to the heat, and we let outside factors affect us um, towards the end of practice. And he's really challenged us to just push through those and be mentally tough and um, just finish through the practice like we can. I mean, the, the first and second drive and, and the team period, do you feel you had a stronger drive there either, between either the first or the second one? Um, I think it's kind of just a, a building block. Um, I don't really notice which which is stronger. I just, I just try to focus on on just keeping the flow going and just working on the next play. You know, last season, as the season went on, did you have any inkling that you that wasn't you weren't going to be done? Um, I, I was sure hoping. I, I honestly, it was up in the air. I was just waiting for the NCAA to, to, to just give me a reply, and I was just working with them um, um, and just communicating with them and giving them whatever they needed. Um, um, and uh, it was just kind of up in the air. I was just really hoping that I would get another year to try to come back and just leave my mark here. So you would turn something in before the season even began? Um, it was in the talks, um, yeah. yeah. What was your reaction when, when they came up? Oh, I was, I was just, I was speechless. I was speechless. I was so grateful to just get another year and just be able to stay with my boys and my brothers and just try to make my impact. Was there a plan, like a, maybe a backup plan, if that didn't go through? Um, I, mean, I was already, I already graduated. I graduated last fall during the season, so just the backup plan was probably to try to move back home or find a place to live and um, just try to get a real uh, career going. Was it especially important knowing that you guys were going to have to replace one starter and you were likely going to have a chance to slide in and, and you were kind of a six starter last year and this was going to be your first chance to, to be a full-time starter on the O-line? Uh, yeah, that was a thought I, after after I heard. and um, But I'm not I'm not getting too comfortable in my spot yet. Um, I'm just taking one day after the next and, and just competing to the best of my ability. Was the Alamo Bowl uh, feel like a bit of a breakthrough in your personal quest? Yeah, it was definitely it was definitely an eye-opening one. It just um, it was a great intro, even though I thought it, it might have been it could have been the last game of my season um, of my football career. Um, it was just amazing to be able to go out there and play with my brothers and and just show what I had to my coach and just pay back all the opportunities that they gave me. When, when did you know you were going to be starting in that game? When, when, when did the coaches tell you about that? Um, About a couple weeks before we started, I, I started taking a few uh, reps in the in the with the ones and just started w working with them a lot more. And uh, come game week, I started. I was just with the ones, and he told me, and I was like, okay, let's go. You're a lineman that has, you know, jumped onto both sides. You know, like last year or the Alamo Bowl, you're on right guard. Now you're over at left guard. And Mason Miller was talking about that's kind of one of the more difficult things to do is go to the opposite side of the ball. From your perspective, how hard is it to change from the right to the left or the left to the right? Um, it's definitely difficult for someone that hasn't like done it. It's, um, I had been on the right side for two years being here, and it was definitely just awkward trying to get um, get it back. But um, thankfully, when I was at City College, I was playing both sides, so it was kind of. I knew how to do both sides, but it, it was just it just took time to rep in. I I had to just get used to it. When when the O line gets off the bus here in Lewiston, you guys all go out to the fence and take care of some business. <laughs> what, do, do do you know when that started or, or why why you guys do that or what's nah, the origin of that at all? <laughs> I don't know. It's it's we've done it since I've been here. I'm sure it's just happened continuously. I don't. We're we're always the first one, just waiting for the buses, because we we need to be here first and get going and working. So we're on the bus for an hour and we're waiting and we're just sitting out there and like I guess someone just started peeing over there and doing their business and it's just stuck. Has that has that happened every every practice since you've been here? Pretty much, yeah, pretty much every 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 single uh, Lewiston practice is just that's the routine. Get off the bus, go put your stuff down, and then just walk over, take your walk to the fence. Else, Rob. Is it is it realistic to um, you guys allowed only 13 and that that's a pretty incredible number for an offensive line, especially as much as you guys pass the balls. Is it realistic to try to improve on allowing only 13 sacks this year? Yeah, definitely. It definitely is. It's it's especially to Coach Miller. He he expects us to get zero, even if that's not obtainable. But 
he's sure going to push us to do that, um, and we're going to work towards that.